All right, good morning, everybody. So I'm here in Cupertino, home of where my parents, where I grew up, but also home of, yes, Apple. And so we're hanging out near the visitor center because I have got something special cooked up for y'all. So um, let's go check it out. Okay, so right now, yes, we are here on Apple Campus, but we're here because we're about to go to two top secret locations that no one can get to other than me. And Okay, fine, maybe a few other people, but these are top secret because I wanted to take shots of us just kind of walking around casually. They don't want to give up any identifiable information so that you might be able to find out where these places are. And of course, we're here to talk about the iPhone, but specifically video and audio on the iPhone. I don't know if you know this, but there are actually four microphones here on your phone. One with the camera ray, there's see a little pinhole there. There's two on the bottom and there's one up top. Now we know that you can record spatial video, but also spatial audio with that. And that allows the combination of these microphones to create this ability to do an audio mix that changes however you want because it's recording all this data. So I figure, hmm, should we go to a top secret lab that shows us how they do all this? Yes, we should. Top secret room here on Apple campus. This is their long wave chamber. Now, what you're gonna see here, this is actually kind of like a room within a room. This room is not connected to any foundation. It's actually floating. There's these uh, kind of, it's essentially suspended and you'll see there's a gap here that divides what we just walked to and into here. Now this is an anechoic room and you may not be able to tell, maybe the sound changed a little bit when I came in here, but this is a completely soundproof, no echo whatsoever. They call it a long wave chamber because what well, you see here, see these different formations? These are sound absorbing panels. They're a little bit porous and the larger wedges allow it to absorb low frequency sounds. I'm gonna show you something that's kind of crazy that you may not realize. If you're wondering why is it bouncing a little bit, let's look down here. This is a wire mesh floor and below it, you can see there's like a, a porous film and below it, again, those large wedges to absorb the sound. This is a 100 person, like it is weird to be in here and to essentially hear, not essentially, you hear no echo. It's like you in your quiet place. But what they're using this room is, which is fascinating, is to test out, right? We have something like an iPhone here and to be able to collect data of how the iPhone mics hear sound. And then they're gonna use that data to then really form the sound signature and try, really give us the consumers a recording that sounds like what we actually hear. And this is the testing room where it all happens. So let's just take a moment. I'm gonna close this door and we're going to hear what a sound test like this in this room is, all right? I'm closing the door, everybody. I'll be back. Oh, look at this. How crazy this is, right? Okay. Wow. Um, have you ever seen anything like this? This is a one of a kind room. They have a few different size anechoic rooms at Apple HQ, but I've never been in anything like this. So let's, let's see here. The phone is rotating because what they're gonna do is create a 360 degree profile. These beeps are coming from this arc, all right? And every time you hear a sequence, the phone is gonna rotate a little more. Right, you see this arrangement, and as the phone rotates, again, think of like a globe, it's creating the entire sound profile at the different angles. Whoop, whoop. How cool is that? So now they take that data, right? How they measure what these mics can capture, and then what they do is they use a little fine tuning, let's call it post-production. They fine tune the sound that it captures. If you've seen all the different audio modes, uh, cinematic, in-frame, um, there's also wind reduction noise. That's all thanks to a lot of the testing that goes in here. A new feature like audio mix or a, a brand new AirPods, we would spend hundreds and thousands of hours across our engineers trying to go through all the way we want this product to sound and how we want to tune it. And that's how we end up with our sound signature. All right, now what you're looking at up here, this is another arc, but connected to these are microphones. Now, why is this important? We heard the beeps from the phone, but when they're testing something like the HomePod, a speaker that is making sound, these mics record again, 
what the sound profile is like, and then Apple then later on can tweak what they want that sound signature. I loved the original HomePod. It had a nice clear bass. It had this, the best way I described it is had this sense of presence. All that testing was done here within HomePod. And this again, microphone kind of op almost opposite to the beeps getting sent on the phone. This is recording the audio from the HomePod. And then they were able to create again, another spherical audio profile and then give you that signature sound all done in this room. I'm gonna show you another room where I gotta actually be, let's call it a participant of this process. All right, everybody, so here is a soundproof room inside Apple HU, another top secret location. This room is isolated, so essentially we're, it's a, it's a flowing room on spring, so it's not touching anything that could cause vibrations. But what we're here is we're gonna check out uh, perceptual user studies, and they use this and this data with hundreds of people, really getting thousands of results to help them fine tune that signature sound that we hear. So I'm just gonna kinda go through this test and see what it's like. So I'm gonna pop on these. AirPods Max, and we've got a sample here, and I'm just gonna press play, and what we have the ability to do is just see how we perceive it, so it's more than just, you know, one person making the decision. Rate the overall quality of A and B. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna choose sample B. Oh yeah. So between right now it's a single clip, but there one of them has more of more background noise that's polluting the sound where the other one, the voices are a lot cleaner. So I think I'm gonna go fair for A. I think B sounds, I think it's good, B's good. All right, I'm gonna go to the next one. And then, so here's another sample here. Let's uh, play it. So I'm hearing raindrops, and sometimes you want that atmospheric sound. I'm gonna go here to B. Ooh, this is a lot more isolated. Again, less background noise. And it really does depend on what, what you like to hear, but I, I, like, I like B. I think B is actually, the sound separation is really nice. And I think in A, it's good, it's just a little different. So I was just a test subject, and what you heard and what I hear might be coming to your next Apple device. So after that user feedback, right, I was a subject who gave, you know, my thoughts and impressions. They collect all that data, they collect all that information, and that factors into their final decision of how they want these microphones to record audio and then how it sounds when you're watching the video from those microphones. All right, so we gotta check out a ton of cool stuff behind the scenes at Apple's Audio Labs. We're here in this dark long tunnel, which means we got something else really cool to show you. And I'm actually here at Apple's Video Validation Lab. We're gonna just take a few more steps and wind around in a second, but this is where they're gonna be testing the fidelity and the quality of the video, whether it's captured from your phone camera or the videos that you see, such as full length feature movies. So we got the iPhone display. How does it look compared to what we see on a big screen like this? We gotta sit down in their video validation lab. I'm gonna call it VVL for short, but here they had different iPhone 16 and 16 Pros lined up so we could see how closely the iPhone display shows off a video that is as close as you can imagine to the actual video showed on a Dolby Vision theater screen. Our engineering team goes out to the real world to capture thousands of video per week. Mm. And we actually have a group of experts look at those video one by one to make sure everything is perfect from noise, color accuracy, dynamic range, and uh, you name it. And uh, that process is uh, really meticulous. And uh, so that's, we are so proud of that achievement. It is not just one person and one, you know, master who's, you know, this golden eye, but I think it really is making sure we're testing so many different scenes, so many different environments, because we know that our users are really pushing the limits of what it can do. And so we want to make sure that they're covered in any of those scenarios. You know, it's always a really cool experience to go behind the scenes with Apple. I mean, how often do you get to do that? The access is really cool, but what I wanted to show you is to kind of give you all a little bit more of appreciation of what goes into something that we really take for granted, microphone quality, audio quality, video display. These are things that we kind of might be a little jaded by, but coming here definitely gave me more of an appreciation of that. And as a content creator, we always talk about why do content creators always say like the iPhone is the best tool for video and audio, this definitely validates that and it's something that I've always felt. 
but now to really experience it is different. And I think another cool thing about this is the tools that they give us, this is a phone that my mom can use to take video at a family dinner, or I can use to make a YouTube video that none of you question what camera it's coming from, and I think that in itself is pretty amazing.